Welcome back to the GTN show. Now, big news this week, the cancellation of the Ironman and Ironman 70.3 World Championships for 2020. We do, however, have confirmed dates for the Tokyo 2020 slash 2021 Olympic Games, a new PTO or Professional Triathlon Organization vice chair, and a 24-hour cycling record attempt. And to add to all of that, we've also got the completion of sale of Ironman from Wanda Sports Group to Avant along with various other issues. So it's got us asking, what on earth is going on over Ironman? Well, first of all, let's talk about Ironman. What on earth is going on over at the Ironman HQ? And I'm sure many of you out there are asking exactly the same question, or perhaps a little disgruntled by their recent actions, or lack of actions for that matter. What are we talking about here? Well, obviously with the recent events with COVID-19, they have had to cancel or postpone a lot of their events. Understandably, if they turn around and they just started issuing refunds left, right and center, they would have gone bust tomorrow. So what they've done is try to postpone their events or push athletes towards deferring their entries. And that is absolutely fine. But the issue is that they kind of been pushing the limits in that and actually been leaving it right until the final date, the deadline, and then re-postponing the events or cancelling them all together. And that has left athletes seriously out of pocket because they haven't been able to cancel their travel, their accommodation, and in some cases, haven't been able to get that race entry money back altogether. And in addition to all of this, the sale of Ironman has been going through from Wanda Sports Group to Advance. In fact, on Monday, that sale completed. But again, it certainly hasn't been without its issues because it would seem that Ironman was seriously overvalued back in 2015 when Wanda bought Ironman. They got it for $650 million, plus the assumption of a fair amount of debt. And I think it's fair to say it wasn't the best business venture for Wanda at the time. And it seems that they've been regretting it quite a lot since and have been fairly keen to get rid of it quite recently. Obviously, on top of all of that, Andrew Messick has resigned from his position as director of Wanda Sports Group. He'll remain a CEO of Ironman. That's not a total surprise. I mean, we are just scratching the surface with this sale of Ironman. There's a lot going on in that. But then there's the really big news, the more recent news that you guys would be interested in. It is the cancellation of the Ironman and Ironman 70.3 World Championships. Now, we can't really blame Ironman for this one. It's not a total surprise. It was out of their hands as well. Now, they did try to deal with this originally and postpone the Ironman and Ironman 70.3 World Championships. They um, tried to postpone the Ironman World Championships from October 2020 to February 2021, still remaining in Kona. The Ironman 70.3 World Championships were meant to take place in November in New Zealand in 2020. They were talking, and there's a lot of speculation around maybe doing them in March 2021, also in New Zealand. Well, I'm afraid to say they are both off the cards, both the Ironman and the Ironman 70.3 World Championships. So the next Ironman World Championships will actually be in October 2021. The Ironman 70.3 World Championships has had a big change, though, because they will no longer be in New Zealand. They're actually going to be in St. George, Utah in September 2021. Whew. There has been a lot going on over at Ironman and we would love to hear your thoughts. So is the sale good? Have Ironman dealt with COVID-19 well? Have they simply got the monopoly? What do you think about the cancellation of the Ironman and Ironman 70.3 World Championships? Are you gutted? Were you expecting it? Are you pleased? Let us know down in the comments section below. Hi there, I am back and I've got some news with some certainty to it, which I feel is rather nice at the moment because we're kind of lacking that, aren't we? It is referring to the dates for the Olympic triathlon next year and they have now been confirmed by the organising committee of the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Yes, slightly confusing because it is going to be in 2021. Now, the men's event is confirmed for July the 26th, the women's July the 27th and the mixed relay for July the 31st. And you might notice the times are different to the original original timing due to the heat that they experienced at the test event so the individual races will be starting at 6 30 in the morning local time and then the mixed relay will be starting at 7 30 in the morning there's no news yet on the para triathlon but i think that will be confirmed very soon as well
More news on the racing schedule, this time a little less certain though, because the World Triathlon Executive Board have announced that the Triathlon World Championships are actually happening this year, except they haven't announced a date or a venue, and we're already at the end of July, so they're leaving it kind of late on that one. They've confirmed that it's going to include the Under-23 World Championships as well as the Junior Worlds. They have, though, said that there isn't going to be a long-distance Duathlon World Championships this year at all, and the World Cups that were scheduled for Brazil and China aren't happening, which isn't really that much of a surprise, I guess. But the World Champs for the Team Mixed Relay, which is due to be in Hamburg on the 4th and 5th of September, is set to go ahead. There's been a boost to triathlon, or at least in theory, as there's a new vice chair that's been announced for the PTO, the Professional Triathletes Organization. Now, this is an organization that's a non-profit. It's there to basically help raise the profile of the pros and also raise the profile of our sport of triathlon. So Chris Kermode has been announced that he's joined the board as the vice chair. Now, he comes from years of experience in tennis. He's a professional player himself in the late 80s, and then he's been acting as the executive chairman from 2013 up to 2019 and he saw tennis really increase its prize money and also continue to increase its participation so he's hoping he can bring that skill set and the expertise into the sport of triathlon which he apparently sees quite a lot of similarity with he's actually said here that the PTO um, has many similarities to the professional tennis um, which began to boom once professionals started to act together um, he then goes on given the decline in participation in sports like tennis and golf which is interesting and the growth in triathlon cycling and other endurance sports um, he thinks there's an enormous potential to develop triathlon as a mainstream sport. So um, he does then say it will require a unified front from professionals and align interest with the commercial partners. But it's great to see that other sports are recognising triathlon and, you know, we're hopefully getting some expertise from them and we can continue to grow our sport, at least once all of this is over and we're back to racing again soon. Anyone who's done Norseman has to be slightly crazy. I mean, as we know, we've got first-hand experience from our presenter, Mark, at doing it. Well, there's a multiple winner of Norseman, Alan. Hofter is obviously slightly wired or likes a challenge and he decided to take on a new challenge of the 24-hour cycling record and his target was to beat the standing Norwegian record which was 767k in that time. Now he had said he wanted to smash it and wanted to at least cover 800 kilometers. Well turned out he did smash it because he covered a whopping 884 kilometers in those 24 hours. And he ended up being just a few K off the overall world record, which stands at 896. So, uh, I mean, an incredible achievement, but it'd be interesting to see if maybe he's got a taste for that and um, wants to go back. Maybe he'll need a few days, I think, to recover and forget the pain, but very impressive effort there. It has been a few weeks since we last had a new shoe with some carbon in it to announce. Well, this one has been a while in the making. We've been waiting for it, but it is Swiss engineering for you apparently 100 iterations of this design and it's on that we're talking about here yes they have just announced a new cloud boom it's their marathon running shoe that is carbon infused and they've designed this with the help of chris thompson great britain's 10k runner and rachel cliff the canadian marathon record holder now it still has the cloud tech technology and the speedboard running through it now you will notice that it's not obviously as deep or as thick as a lot of the recent carbon shoes but it does have a nine mil heel toe drop which is a bit more than some of the other on shoes and this one is built to last and comes in at a lower price point as well so they recommend it should last around 500 miles which for some of these carbon shoes that have recommended around 100 to 150 and coming in at 170 pounds it's going to be a pretty good value but i am very excited to try that see if um, maybe any of us at gtn can go and give it a go on a marathon pb maybe we've enjoyed watching plenty of e-racing throughout the lockdown i think pros have enjoyed racing it well super league triathlon teamed up with zwift for their series and they've now just taken that relationship to the next level as they have just announced the Arena Games, which is going to be a real-life virtual reality triathlon, if that makes sense. So these are going to be held on the 23rd of August in Rotterdam. This is going to be their first event and all athletes are going to be competing under one roof. So they've got an Olympic-sized swimming pool for obviously the swim section. Then they're going to have their bikes on turbos and treadmills all next door. So it's still going to be in that very fast format with changing the order of the events. And they've already got the likes of Johnny Brownlee, Richard Murray, Taylor Spivey, Rachel Klammer all signed up for this and it sounds like the first event is going to be just broadcast so we can watch it for free wherever we want. They're not actually going to have viewers in the arena to start with but it does sound like that. This could be quite an exciting new format for triathlon. I mean it could be a little bit chaotic if you get age groupers doing it but it's going to be very exciting to see how this pans out for pros and also what it means for the sport of triathlon in the future. 
A quick recap of the racing news. It was just the Ironman VR 15 event we had, and it was an incredibly successful weekend for the married couple of Jeannie Seymour and Justin Metzler, who took the title of the women's and the men's races, respectively. So Jeannie Seymour won in a time of 1.16.04, a convincing three minutes, just over three minutes lead over Leslie Smith. Kimberly Goodall was third, and Palmira Alvarez was fourth on the women's race. Now, the men's race was a little bit closer, with Justin Metzler just one minute ahead of Steve Steven Zavaski, Sam Appleton was third and Bradley Weiss was fourth. It's time to take a look at your photos and from what we've had sent in this week it's clear that you guys are definitely venturing outside for more of your training at the moment or do share those pictures whether it's cycling, swimming or running we'd love to see them and if you have got a pain cave and you're doing some work there or maybe you're in the southern hemisphere and it's not quite so nice outside please share those as well and we would be delighted to share them back with you guys next week. Well this first one to get us started is from Tiffany and this is a bit of a story here um, even though Ironman 70.3 Lubot was cancelled just days before the race. Yeah, Mark touched on that one, didn't he? Um, they decided to make the six hour drive and ride the course on their own, which is cool. Like, I think a lot of people are doing that at the moment, but um, it wasn't quite so straightforward. So last year she had a DNF. Um, so obviously had some unfinished business and wanted to go back and, you know, just prove that they could do it. Um, however, um, almost didn't get the chance. There's just a couple of hours from Lubok, the bike rack let go <laughs> and the bike flew off the rack now that sounds a pretty um yeah sort of scary moment doesn't it when you see your bike flying out of the um, view in the rear view mirror and um, fortunately and unbelievably landed on the side of the road in one piece and just a bit of road rash no major damage able to ride it the next day and she looks delighted in that picture but oh what a, what an event <laughs> that is um to come back a year after and get it done so well done tiffany and great photos too thanks for sharing those um this one hopefully is fixed onto the crack a little better this picture from Alex in Latvia um, saying that maybe a Mustang isn't the best vehicle for transporting your bike but good to see that where there's a will there's a way just make sure it's fixed on properly Tiffany learned the hard way um, finally this picture from Switzerland sent in by Matthew and um, well I'm enjoying the views as much as I am the bike I would love to try a Canyon Grail um, so he swapped his Canyon Grail after using his Canyon Endurance first gravel ride well I follow quite a few people who ride in Switzerland and it sounds like the gravel riding out there is pretty epic so um, I hope you, you had a wonderful ride well guys do share those if you need the link it's on screen now and you can also find it in the description below. It's me again, I'm back with the caption competition and last week's photo was a bit of a throwback going back through the archive to I'm a niece 2016 and this was of age group athlete, incredible athlete actually, Paul Lunn, who is part of the Zwift Triathlon Academy and here he is whizzing past a chap looking incredibly chilled and sedentary here in his deck chair. Um, it's almost like a Tour de France scene here um, but we had a ton of great captions coming in so I'm going to rattle through a bunch here. So Stefan Hoffmeister said, I'm an spectator's guide, step one, get nice and comfortable. Nice niece, that we did there. Uh, Danny Staten said, forget Iron Man, I prefer to compete as an Iron fan. Alex O'Neill, live sports broadcast is getting amazing, like it's happening in your front room. Ryan Caesar Santura said, guys, is this the new Zwift Weightopia course? Very good. Uh, Vin Lizzie though, this is a nice, effective, simple one. Both sitting down on the job. I like it, it's great. You are the winner of the caption comp. Get in touch, we'll ping a cap out to you ASAP. But this week's photo is actually another throwback from 2013 from Norseman of the athletes on the ferry, but one in particular in the tier or TYR wetsuit looking incredibly chilled. In fact, maybe even asleep. Well, leave your captions in the comments section below. That is it for the show this week, although I have one last question for you guys out there. And this is with regards to swimming. Now, obviously with COVID-19, many of you have not been able to swim for the past few months, but have you been missing it? Are you dying to get back in the pool or have you really enjoyed not having to swim? And actually the idea of having to go back swimming is a little daunting and scary and you really don't want to. We'd love to hear where your head is at. Also drop your thoughts in the comments section below. But if you have enjoyed today's show, do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. We have a ton of stuff coming up on the channel over the next week or so, including my rather crazy Everesting run, which was in all honesty, disgusting. 
Um, but you can see it all this weekend, as well as why we take a rest day. Um, and don't forget, obviously, you can get hold of a load of our GTN merch over at our shop, which you can find a link for that on screen right now or in the description below. We also have our Couch to 5K that went out over the weekend, where you can see Pippa going from the couch to doing a 5K. Um, also have our Optimum Saddle Height video, so do go over and check that one out too.